This project series is brought to you by the fine folks over at Smooth On and the wonderful people at Tested.com. Thanks, you guys. Hey everyone, it's Bill Duran here from Punished Props, and I've got a really cool project sitting right over there that I've started working on. <laughs> this is big. Uh, whoa, check that out. This is the start of the rifle from District 9. I had a chance to chat with my friends Will and Norm over at Tested.com, and we decided to do this really cool project together uh, for San Diego Comic Con, which is coming up <laughs> like really soon. And this is the project, a rifle from District 9. This first part is gonna deal with the fabrication process of the main gun body. First, the materials and tools, which will all be linked down below so you can check them out for yourself. Most of the gun body is made out of MDF because it's cheap and readily available. I also have a little bit of styrene plastic in there, also very available. As far as tools are concerned, most of this was done with cutting and sanding using a variety of tools like a scroll saw, a bandsaw, a handsaw, different handsaws, and what else? There's another one in there. Right, a jigsaw and lots and lots of sanding, including a disc sander, hand sander, belt sander, the sander sander, oh, um, oscillating spindle sander, which is really cool, and some nail files and sanding twigs. Most of the build process actually happened in the design phase. I used references from the uh, kit that Weta put out a couple of years ago, as well as a little one quarter scale model that I have. I then drew up the entire gun using different layers and different thicknesses in SketchUp. Each of these layers corresponds to a different thickness of MDF wood, including a quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, and one eighth inch. Then I was able to lay out all of these different layers and pieces in a blueprint and get it printed out full scale at FedEx. These blueprint pieces were then trimmed out roughly and I used a spray adhesive to stick them to their various thicknesses of wood. Then I basically have a model kit and I can just cut out all of these pieces and start gluing them together. Using all of my fancy pants saws, I cut out all the different pieces, uh, kind of roughly a little bit, but then I cleaned them up a whole bunch on all of those different sanders that I mentioned earlier before. This was the bulk of the work process, cutting out lots of little pieces and then cleaning them up on the sander. This guy has a whole bunch of beveled edges on it. So I also spent a lot of time doing exactly that. Again, using a variety of sanders and saws to cut away material roughly and then cleaning it up a bunch later on. Once I was happy with a bunch of the detail pieces and beveling on all of the layers, I could start laminating them all together starting with those three sort of big thick pieces. Those guys got wood glued together and then clamped down to make sure they were nice and secure. And then I could add the smaller and thinner layers later on. Usually I use super glue for these guys because it dries really fast and it bonds pretty much permanently. Once all those layers were sort of stuck on there, uh, I could go in and sand in any overlap or any gaps that occurred from the lamination process to have these nice smooth finished surfaces. Some of the other areas required a little bit more love and some filling. In this case, I used Evercoat's uh, body filler stuff. It's a lot like Bondo to sort of smear it in some of the gaps. And then uh, once it cured, I go in and clean it up with some sandpaper and some files and make it look all nice and pretty. This entire like cutting out, sanding, beveling, finishing process was repeated a whole bunch of times to get the gun to its current state, which is this guy right here. And it's getting there. I do have a little bit more cleanup work to do on this. I'm gonna round over some more edges and add a little bit more detail, uh, but it's just about ready to head on to the next phase. The next phase you say, oh, this has a whole bunch of different cylinder pieces on it, which means I'm gonna be spending a lot of time in front of my lathe and that will be in the next video, along with getting this thing prepped for molding. So if you haven't already, you definitely wanna subscribe so that you don't miss the next few stages and of course, I've got some more videos that you ought to go and check out, including some full prop build videos uh, that are just chock full of lots of really good information. Thank you guys for watching the video. And of course, thank you Tested for helping me put on this project. And thank you very much to Smooth On for supporting the project with their fine materials that I will be using very soon. All right, I better get back to work and I'll see you guys next time.